Hey, welcome to Church Experience. Thank you so much for spending part of your weekend with us. Now's a great time to grab your pens and weeklies and head to your seats if you haven't already, because the service starts in 90 seconds. to see you today. I'm looking forward to today's impacting service. During the service, you may have some questions, comments, or prayer requests. So go to churchexperience.tv slash connect or pull out your camera app and scan the QR code to connect with us. Or you can even hit that subscribe button if you always want to know what's going on here at CE. We're always glad to hear from you, get back to you, and pray for you. But guess what time it is? Time to spend some time worshiping God through some songs. Let's jump in, participate, and let God speak to us through this time. We're clearing off the surface. You're coming in the focus. We're going back to the basics. The glory of your face is the reason why we do this. The winds of worship blowing. The doors of heaven open. Jesus, you're at the center. Lord, help us to remember the reason why we do this. Yes, it's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. Always has been, always will be. Our priorities are changing 
worship you. We worship the same God, the same God of David, of Moses, of Mary, the same God who works miracles then. We know you'll work a miracle now. And God, I just, I pray that we all get to experience you in a whole new way, whether it's through your message or this time of worship with you, God. God, we need you. 
We need you in the good times and the bad, but God, we need you. We worship you and we love you, God. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. At Christmas, we celebrate God's greatest gift to us, his son, Jesus Christ. We remember that he spent his entire life loving, serving, and giving, and asking for our love in return. It's as if each time you serve others, you serve Jesus and a handful of hay is dropped in the manger. The more we serve, we often do it to bless and to bring joy to others. But as we look in the mirror, we realize it changes us. We begin to look for more ways to serve others and ultimately Jesus. We help those in our communities in need. We invest in the next generation. We play a role in starting new church locations to bring hope to more communities. We invest in projects across CE campuses that increase kingdom impact. By Christmas, the manger would be filled with hay from us helping others and our hearts would be full. Jesus had no crib for a bed but we can give him a manger full of love. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Matthew 2540b. Good morning. So we are 34 weeks into church plant. 34 weeks. The numbers are increasing, huh? Only by one every week, obviously. But but we're 34 weeks. That is awesome. Luke said to me the other day, Dad, it's going to be close to your age soon. I'm like, sure, it will be. <laughs> still, still a couple of weeks, but <laughs> we'll get there eventually. But uh, but I'm so grateful for what God is doing here. It's happy Thanksgiving. Wasn't it? Uh, this week has been a wonderful week in, in some of God's. We had a lovely friend's giving. Here's a photo of it. We had, uh, we had like 80 people here. Um, Jen had got some lamb. I think, Carl, you made the lamb. So Jen was like, all in. I'm like, that's all that I need. And so we, it was wonderful. It was so wonderful to, to celebrate with all of you, uh, Friendsgiving. And it's just been, it was a great celebration. We've, got, we've had some high highs this week. Uh, after this, this message, we, we, we go and I'm going to go marry a couple. And uh, it's my first wedding that I've ever done in this. In this uh, I hope I'm legally married. I just, I don't know, filled out a form. So hopefully I can. <laughs> but... But, but there's been some really high highs, but there's also in my life this week has been some low lows. Uh, I know that um, I'm used to just worrying about the spiritual maturity of my family. Uh, and I knew that when I became a shepherd, uh, I was going to be worried about the spiritual maturity of the body of Christ. And... And it kind of overwhelmed me a bit because I've had some really low lows uh, this week. I've dropped the ball with a lot of people. Uh, people are looking at me for answers, and I'm going like, like me? Like, is it not? Is it not someone else that you know? Because I'm used to asking the now people are looking to me, and and I dropped the ball with with people this week, and I just felt so bad because um, I don't want to, and and I lacked compassion this week. I lacked love. I lacked uh, discernment, and. and um, I just, I felt really bad. I felt really guilty this week in a lot of ways because, and sometimes I've realized some of it is, is, um, as we are, as we are growing, as we are chasing after God, as we are seeking him, uh, the enemy will try and distract us. And so we have high highs and there'll be low lows. And sometimes it's at the same time. 
And and I felt really bad because I let people down. And isn't that what discipleship is? And when we when we came here, we I always talk about it, discipleship. And 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 I felt like I was talking about it a lot, but I wasn't doing it. And um, thankfully, there, there's grace here. And I just felt I felt guilty for some people because I just didn't I didn't handle something. I didn't I wasn't in tune with what the Spirit is leading me to. And I felt really bad. And and so. Thank you for just, I suppose, allowing me to kind of navigate through this 34 weeks in. You know, it's like I, I'm still a work in progress. I'm still kind of figuring out how this works. But, but, but I, I, I'm loving what God is doing in the life of this church. I'm loving it. I, and sometimes He's doing stuff in spite of me. You know, but, but it's just been, it's been amazing to see what God has been doing. Um, and, and I want to talk about. I know I've talked about rugby a lot, and I, I'm, I'm sure you guys are pretty sick of rugby. And so I thought I'll talk about another sport today, and that is cricket. So, so cricket. Uh, who has ever heard of cricket before? I was talking to to Megan on on uh, Friendsgiving, and I was talking about cricket. And I could just see she was like, "Please no." And I said to, I said, "Can I talk about it on Sunday?" And she's like, "No." She, I think he thought I was joking. But yes, cricket. He has a video of some of some cricket. Cricket is a sport where you're literally out there with your bat, and every single one of these eleven players are to get you out. Every every single one of them. And the bowler will try and bowl you out. The wiki will try and catch you. The people try and catch you if you hit the ball out to them. As soon as you get out on that pitch, everyone is trying to... And I felt like that was it this week. Sometimes my relationship was like that. Everything that I'm trying to do is trying to get me out in some way, trying to make me fall, trying to trying to distract me. And uh, and this ball, this is a hard leather... Like, it's a, it's a hard ball. And this this will bowl at about 90 miles an hour. They say you've got about 0.4 seconds to, to respond. And it's actually legal to bowl at someone's head. It's not like baseball where if it gets hurt, the guy can walk. It's like you're allowed to bowl at the person. And there's there's some games that last a few hours. There's some games that last five days. Five days, guys. That that is, And it can be the best, most infuriating watch game ever because most people just fall asleep and watch it. But it can also be so intense because can you imagine if you're the last, last man standing, right? If you go out, your team lose. But you have to keep batting for a couple of hours. Does that make sense? So, so you you there, and every one of these people, like this, every single one of them will try and do everything to distract you, to get you out, and you have to try and like withstand it for a couple of hours. And you can imagine how exhausted. I mean, there was a game the other day where the guy was literally cramping up. He couldn't actually run. He's literally, if you can't run, you can actually get someone to run for you. How funny is that? But, but literally, you can cramp up, and literally for hours on end, you you, you have to just have to face this barrage. And sometimes I feel that our relationship with our father is like that. We we can go out there and we've got all the best intentions, but but one after another after another, there are these things. And and I wanted to show you this cricket ball because I've had this feeling for for a while. This not a I suppose it's a sense, but sometimes our our relationship with our father can lose its shine. You know, after a while, it kind of like loses its appeal. It loses its shine. And and the the sad thing with that is that if if it loses its shine, we, we we look somewhere else for it, and so we we chasing after things to 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 help us, right? And so, okay, I'm I'm all in on God and, until I'm not, and then and then okay, then there's this, and then we chase after that, and then if we if we don't find what we're looking for there, then okay, I'm going to go for for something else. And often that happens when we when we lose that shine, that appeal, that that the desire of our Father. I never want us to be a church where we where we remember the good old days with our Father, where we remember the good old days of our relationship. Remember when when God was doing this in our life. I want the best time to be right now and, and, and excited about what he's going to do in the future. That's what I want. You know, we always say the best is yet to come. And, and it's like that. It's like, I, I want us to all firmly believe that the best that God has for us is still in the future. It's not in the past. We can look at the past and that it can encourage and build our faith because we can see all the ways he's come through. I mean, just this week, even with the highs and the lows, I've been reminded of the goodness of the Father in, in the most small and the most big way that he's done. And isn't it like that? Sometimes we... We, we, we go after him, and, and it's hard sometimes. I, I get it. Our, our faith can be like this sometimes. It can lose its appeal. And, and when it loses its appeal, we, we go for the next thing, and then and that doesn't work. And so oh, what else is there? What, what else can we go to? And that's how my journey's been sometimes. It's just been like this, you know? And, and, and today, it's what I've really titled my message is fading from faith. So sometimes our faith fades. And it's a slow, it's a slow process, often. Often it's a slow process when it happens. It's... It, it just suddenly you, you suddenly you're like oh wow I, I I've stopped praying, I've stopped seeking him, I've stopped I've stopped going to church whatever it is and I've stopped having quiet times I've stopped having that that zeal that I used to have I, I've I've stopped that and and so how do we go after that well 
1 Timothy 4.16 says it like this. It says, watch your life and your doctrine closely. Persevere in them. So we persevere. We are, we're intentional with it. The same thing that Paul said uh, to this, the churches in Asia Minor. This is in Acts 14.22. It says, strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true to the faith. And so we keep it. We, we, remember, the, we remember the faith that he's given us. But at the same time, we look forward to the faith that's still to come. And so this is how it says it in Hebrews. Hebrews 12, uh, 1 to 3, basically. It says, let us run the race with perseverance, the race marked out for us. So we've all got a race, friends, all of us. Every single one of us have, have a race to run. It's all different. We all have a different race to run. We don't. It's very easy, obviously, to see someone else's race and, 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 and compare. But no, it's our own race. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. And then it carries on to say that the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning the shame. And so, like, when I read that, the joy set before him, he endured the cross. What? How do you have joy when, you, when you've been nailed on a cross? That doesn't make sense to me. But he did it for you and for me, for our faith to be established in him. And so it was joy for him to, be, to endure the cross because he knew that he's the author and the perfecter of our faith. And so he did it willingly. And it was, I don't know how, but it was joyful. Because he knew what, 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 what can happen in our lives when we put our faith in him. When, when he's the author and the picture of our faith, he endured it. And so we fix our eyes on him and we do it. And I love the fact that it says he's the author and the perfecter. So he's the author of our faith. He, he created, he started the faith. He, he gave us the faith to believe in him. He initiated the relationship and he's the perfecter of it. He, he's the one who sees it through to the end. He, he, he was there at the beginning. He's there at the end. He, he's there to see the faith through to it. And Jesus is the source of our faith. And so we remember what he's done, the faith, you know, the faith, the journey that we've got on. We remember what he's done and that builds us up for what's still to come. The, whatever's still out, whatever's out there, it, it, it encourages us that whatever we're going to face, we don't do it alone. And he's with us and, and he's got the faith. He's built the faith in us to, to trust him for what's still to come. And so we will, one of the things that I think that's really important with this that I wanted to add is that, that this should always happen in a community. Always. It should always happen in a body of, of Christ. This is a weird thing I'm holding this ball the whole time. It just feels so natural to me. Um, yeah. Uh, when I tried to explain cricket to someone the other day, I was like, oh, well, the more I explain it, the more I realize how complicated it is. Uh, it's kind of like baseball. If you explain baseball to me, you've probably lost me. But, but when you grow up with the sport, it just sounds easy. I mean, I can name you all the, the fear. It, it's confusing, but, but it's just weird to like, play around with, a, with a, a cricket ball. But, but this should be done in the community. This should be done together. We, we, we're never meant to be isolated. We're never meant to, to go on our Christian journey alone and uh, yes, we have our own spiritual journey, we're on our own race, but we're meant to do this together and, and celebrate with each other and, and help each other and encourage each other. And, 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 and yes, you, you're doing well on the race and let me help you and let's, let's, let's help you on this journey. So, because at the same time, it says in like John 16, it says that we will face trials and temptations in life. We will. Our faith will be challenged. But it's not only in the difficult times that we, we put in our heels and we, 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 we fight for our faith. We fight for our faith. We contend for our faith always. We always, we always need to contend for our faith. We, 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 what, we, what, what we go through today will prepare, prepare us for tomorrow. What, what we go through today, what we can store up for the faith that we need for tomorrow or the next day, whatever needs to happen down there. And our faith should always be growing, always. Our faith should always be growing. As we, as we seek Him, as we trust Him more, our faith should always be built up even more. And, and um, I've said this before, you will not drift into discipleship. Now, discipleship, we don't go there for and make disciples. You will not drift into discipleship. It's not like one day you just wake up, oh, I'm a, I'm a disciple now. Oh, that's, is there like a plaque? Do I, I don't know. Do I get a bench named after me? I, I don't know. Like, how does this discipleship thing work? We will not drift into discipleship. They, in, in, in cricket, what they do is you can see this ball's shiny, right? Because it hasn't been used. But, but as it gets used, it kind of loses its shine. You know, as the, the hard knocks come, it loses its. And so what they actually do, uh, is they shine the one side, they shine it really hard as the game's going on, and the other side they leave dirty. So they do that because as they bowl it, it starts drifting. So it's, they call it swinging. They, you can imagine if you've got like uh, less than a half a second to respond, and this thing swings even a little bit, it can either bowl you out or you can get caught or whatever like that. And so we will not drift into discipleship. I, I wrote to you that we will drift into the depravity of the world. I'm like, that's quite. Isn't it, isn't it like, isn't that what happens? The drifting that we face is often towards the world. It happens naturally. We don't go looking for it. Suddenly it just happens naturally. Look at, if you, if you don't believe me, look at kids. You don't have to teach kids to be naughty. It just happens automatically. You're like, who taught you this? Who taught you to kick your brother and steal his toy? I'm using that as an example. My boys were perfect growing up. No, they weren't. They were, you know. 
But but it's like who taught you this? It's like did you you learn it from me? Did your mom teach you to kick your brother and steal his toy? No. But the, it happens, isn't it? it? Happens like I'm sure the boys sometimes they it gets like that. No one teaches them to be naughty. We we drift to the depravity of the world. Like you know, we come with our own baggage. Don't come with baggage today. The toilets are locked. They're blocked today. But but what I mean is is that we will we we drift towards the world. You know, suddenly we. We have to be intentional and fight for our faith. We have to fight to go after it. It doesn't happen automatically. We don't drift to that. We drift to what the world says. And, and it's hard because, you know, someone might say, oh, but what you believe is outdated. Or they might say, oh, um, you know, those, those things in here, no, you don't believe those anymore. The world's changed. The world's more enlightened now. And I'm going, that is it? Like, is the world more enlightened now than it ever has been? Are we doing better as a culture or not? I, I don't know about you, but the culture looks worse. Do you know what I mean? And I, I'm not a a doom and gloom type of guy, but I'm going, well, people are looking for their own identity and their own thing, and on the outside looking in, that doesn't look like it's going well. But, but you know what I mean? If I tell them that, that's unloving. Do you know you, you see what I'm saying? And so we have to fight for our faith. We have to contend for our faith, even if we don't have all the answers. But but we won't, it, this, that doesn't happen automatically. We don't drift into discipleship. We drift in the, into the depravity of the world. And, and how does that look? And so you might say, yes, well, but I'm here on time. I'm, I'm at church, and, and that's cool. But but I think God desires so much more for us, so much more than just coming to church and, and, and sitting here for, but he desires so much more. He desires us to have faith in him and love for him. I want to read you this thing that this guy wrote, like a piece after um, listening to uh, Charles Spurgeon. And he, he, he titles this, he said, love without faith is lost. And he said, love entices, encourages, motivates. Love can help us up our game, work harder for something. But without faith, love loses its power. You can go to great lengths for someone you love, but if you lack faith in them, our motivation can fade. Momentum decreases and the relationship stalls, becomes stagnant. You know, it's like if I, I have to be intentional, like with Jen, I, I want to love on her and I want our love to, to grow. I, I don't want us to remember, oh, the, the time when I used to love her, when we were young in love, you know, we always joke about that. I want our love to increase. And so you have to be intentional. I have to have faith in that. And, 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 and it says, for we need more than emotion to maintain motion. To keep pushing forward, we need signs of commitment, investment, connection. So we focus our faith in God, recognizing what He has promised us, remembering what He's done for us, recalling the ways He's worked in our lives. You know, when you look back and you say, Lord, look at all the prayers that you've answered, that builds up our faith and uses us to build up our faith. For when we encourage cha encounter challenges, it is our faith that will sustain us. At the times we don't feel love, our faith will point us back to the truth, the truth of His love for us, His plan for us. The faith will carry us through the season when our emotions recover. Sometimes our emotion is, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. And my emotions are all over the place. But, but the faith can help us through this where we can love again. Lord, today I recall the times that you've been there for me, the times you've sustained me, the blessings that you've given me, the trials that have grown me. Today I want to nurture my faith in you. It's like this spiritual journey that we're on, every single one of us, it has its highs and lows, doesn't it? We have those times where we're like, yes, everything's going well, and thank you, Lord. And there's times where we're like, Lord, where are you? I thought, I thought you were going to answer me. I'll give you an example, and I've been, I've been praying about whether to, to, to share this. And I was actually, when I mentioned it a couple of weeks ago, maybe two months ago, I actually prayed then about whether I mentioned it or not. But about, about maybe two months ago, I put up a graph about the giving at, at CE West Chase and how it was on an upward trajectory, and it was great. And I was so grateful and so thankful for all of you. And, and I, I felt, maybe in my own spirit, I, I felt that, that, that I've got this now, Lord. I, do you know what I mean? It's like, Lord, I don't, I, we do, okay, cool. Like, we managed to put money away. We were managing to put like 20% away as a church to save. And so I was like, okay, Lord, like, we're good. Thank you, you know. And then since then, it's just kind of, it's dipped so much so that now our, our, our expenses is more than our income, you know. And it rocked me because I was like, Lord, where are you? Like, why aren't you, why aren't you coming through Oh, and I felt him just say to me, like, Warren, is your, is your faith in people or is your faith in me? And I'm saying this not to guilt you. I, I, you, you know my heart. My, 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 it's never meant to guilt you. Never give out of guilt. Never feel, oh, there's the, the African immigrant asking for money again. It's like, hello, all these Africans always asking for money all the time. That's on my heart. But, but um, I felt God just say in, the, in that time, it's like, Warren, trust me, I, I'll build my church. I'll build it. And I'm like, okay, cool. I, I, I just have this freedom now that, Lord, that, that God will come through. How? I don't know. But I have this faith and this trust in Him because I love Him and I trust Him. And it's like, Lord, you will come through. And the crazy thing is, is that he, he invites all of us to be a part of it. All of us. 
in, in many ways. And giving is one way. Giving isn't the only way we, we, we give back to God. You know, we give Him our time, our talent, our treasure. That's a whole other message in, in and of itself. But, but this is one way that He invites us to be a part of what He's building. So I know that this church will grow. I, I know that we, that, that we will, you know, grow and make disciples and make an impact for Him. And I know that. And as long as I keep my, my focus on Him, it will be fine. As long as I'm not building towards myself, if, if I do, please tell me and run away, you know. But if I build towards Him and I seek Him and I seek intimacy with Him, He'll take care of all the details. So I'm like, Lord, I hand that over to you. I actually don't know. I actually don't want to know who gives or not. I don't. I, I don't want to know because I know my heart is impure sometimes and that could affect. So I'm like, Lord, I hand that all over to you and I trust you with my provision. I never want you to feel guilty. Never. I don't want any of you ever to feel guilty. And, and since then, I've just had this freedom that, Lord, I, I, I trust you. I have faith in you. And, and he will come through. But, but he, had to, he had to get me to that, ploy, that, that point to, to, to trust him. And listen, we, this is a generous church. We, we, you guys are generous. And I want to thank you for that. And I know it, sometimes it takes time. I, I get it. Sometimes we've maybe been hurt in the past. And, and, and we, we still don't know how that whole system works. And, and we, we, we don't know any of that. But, but I just want to honor you. However you find yourself here, just thank you. Thank you for that. But he, had to, I, he, he was almost reminding me, do I trust him? I don't want any of us to have a faded faith where, where it was shiny at one stage and now it's faded. I don't want that. I don't want this for any of us. It's, uh, like it says in Colossians, we must be rooted up and built up in Him, strengthened in the faith. I want to, uh, our faith to always be strengthened and rooted in Him. I want it to be better today than it was when we first got saved. I want us to continue to go after Him and be built in the faith. And so how do we do that? Well, there's three ways that I, that I wrote here. The first one is we can focus our faith. Uh, faith isn't just a, a vague idea. There's a point to the faith, and that's Jesus. He's the point of our faith, and so we, we focus on Him. It says in 1 John 5, 12, it says, whoever, whoever has the Son has life. And so we focus on Him. Our journey is with Him. Our faith is in Him, and so that's the focus. And so we focus our faith on Him. Our, be, our journey begins with Him. It ends with Him. It says He's the author and perfect of our faith. That's what we read earlier. Second one is we feed our faith. We feed it. And just like uh, if we don't feed, we will get malnourished and we eventually will, will perish. The same with our spiritual food. We need to feed ourselves spiritually. How do we do that? Well, one is we can read the Word. We can read the Word, have quiet times, uh, Bible studies, all the rest. We can read the Word. We can pray. It's another way that we feed ourselves spiritually. Uh, we can pray and then we can do it in community and fellowship. So we come to church. We, we pray over each other. We, 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 do you know what I mean? We invest in people. We, we, that's how we feed our faith. I love it that we've, there's just so much um, there's so much out there available for us. Uh, you know, you can read the Bible. You've got Bible plans. You, you can listen to podcasts. You can, you know, you've got the YouVersion Bible app. There's so many different Bible things that you can do. Make the time to do that. Feed your faith. However it works for you. Maybe when you're driving. Maybe when, you, when, you're on the, when you're running or cycling. Whatever it is, find the time to feed your faith. And then we follow our faith. We put our faith into action. This is what it says in James uh, 122 says, do not merely listen to the word. You know, like our muscles become stronger when we exercise. Our faith becomes stronger when we exercise it. If Jen and I were still in, in Johannesburg and were saying like, Lord, here I am, use me. God would be going, hello, I, I've, I've, you know what I mean? I've got a path for you. You need to step out and, and trust me. So there might be things in your life that, that, that you, you're unsure of. You, you, you know, you think that's what, you know that that's what God wants you to do, but you don't know how to do it. Just Get out the boat. Just take a step of faith. Trust Him. In my life, God gives me enough faith just for this little one. And as I step the, the, the step, and I'm like, okay, Lord, I, I got that. It was a bit wobbly at times, but, but okay, now I've got enough faith for the next one. And we, we trust Him like that. Maybe, maybe you're more enlightened than me where He gives you the whole, <laughs> the whole journey. But, but, but find that thing. Take action in your faith. Trust Him. I, I love the story when we were sharing last night about just giving up everything and trusting Him to, to move here. I mean, it's a crazy story. People might think you're crazy. When, when you take out a step and you trust Him, people might think, the people that, don't, that are not Christ followers, they might think that you're crazy for the decisions that you're making. And you know what? That's okay. That's all right. It's, it's okay if people think that I'm weird, that we, that we came and we gave up all that we gave up to do this. It's okay. Because I'm here for God and I want to trust Him and I want to seek Him and I want to bring as many people as I can with, with me. Do you know what I mean? And so we focus our faith, we feed our faith, and we follow our faith. And so why do we battle with this? Well, I think maybe partly the reason why we battle with this is because we don't know God well. We, we, we think we do. Like, you know, we might say God is love, but, uh, but what does that mean? Because, because when, when I look at my life, there's just so much hurt and, and issues in my life. How can, I, 
how can I say that God is love when there's all those things? And what I would encourage you is just to seek intimacy with him. Just seek him. Seek him for all that he is. Spend time with him. Seek him. Read scripture and suddenly you'll see, you'll see scripture and you'll start seeing all these, all these different things in scripture of, of the deep love that the Father has for you, the deep love that Jesus went to for you and me. I mean, our, our whole thing, our whole vision is to, is to know Jesus and to make him known. That, that's us as a, as, a, as, a, as a vision for our church. That's it. It's, it's to know Jesus and to make him known, to love God and to love his people. That's it. That's it. I, I, how do I love God? Well, I, I invest in I, I go after him. I seek him. I, even when I'm at my lowest, I seek him. It's, it's very easy to, at our best, go, okay, Lord, I'm good. I, I, thank you so much. But often when, when, when it dips and it's hard and it's messy, then we cry out and, we, and that's when we seek him. But he builds up our faith for that. So if you've had a great week, we celebrate. If you've had a bad week, we, we come together and we pray and we seek him. And we're like, Lord, we're a body of Christ. We're going to go after you together. And, and sometimes it's going to be hard. I want to tell you this um, the story from the Bible. It's in Mark 9. And, and this is a really, sure, it's a really humbling story for me because um, there's just, for me, so many, so many layers uh, in it. And, and um, yeah, there's just so many layers in it. It's when Jesus is with the, the, the demon-possessed boy. Uh, Jesus had just gone up. There was a transfiguration with a few of his disciples, and, and he comes down, and, and then the, some of the disciples are, are like just having a conversation with these guys, and, and there was this boy with, that was demon-possessed, um, and the dad is there, and, and the, the, the disciples weren't able to heal, weren't able to heal the boy. And so Jesus starts to have this, this dialogue with me, and, and um, it's from, it's, we could start in like verse 49, Mark chapter 9 from 14. And they said there was a large crowd together, and they were arguing with them, and, and, and Jesus is like, what are you arguing about? And this, this guy comes there, and he says, listen, there's a teacher, I brought my son, who, who's just had this spirit, this demon-possessed spirit, since he, it says since he was little. And, and can you imagine being that father who's had this boy who's been demon-possessed for so long? Uh, Jesus actually says to him, how long has he been like this? Uh, bring the boy to me. In verse 21, he said, uh, how long has he been like this? And the dad says, from, child, from childhood. It's often thrown him into fire or water to kill him. Can you imagine that? Being that father? There's this boy, and he's probably lost so much hope. And, and maybe he questioned so many different things about, uh, about his own life. And, and um, I might say something that's a bit controversial, but faith for me is so much more than just raising your hand and saying, I need faith. So much more than that. For, for me, faith is like, that could be the start of it, but faith is something that takes root in your soul. And saying, Lord, I, you know, and the, the problem with that is that often if we do that, we say, okay, you've got faith now, go on your merry way and sort yourself out. No, there's, there's so much nuances in this. And, and you've got this dad who's, who doesn't know what to do. And so he, he knows where Jesus is. He's gone to go find Jesus and he's trying to get he healing on this little boy that he's got. And, and Jesus says to him, well, how long has he been like this? And he says, well, this demon in him has tried to kill my boy multiple times. It says he's thrown him into the fire, into the water. Can you imagine being that dad? I mean, we've got a lot of parents here. Can you imagine that was your boy? He carries on to say the dad says, but if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can. Can you feel that compassion that this father has? Can you feel just that? Jesus, if you, if you can, help me. Please help me. And Jesus says, if I can, he says, everything is possible for one who believes. And I, and I know that this, this scripture is taken out of context so much. I can name it and claim it. Believe it hard enough and you'll, you'll get it. And, and often what happens with that is if, 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 we, if we have this attitude, and then, Lord, if I just believe hard enough that you'll come through, and what if he doesn't? Then, then our, our faith is rattled and, and often that's when we drift because as he didn't answer my prayer, I had this prayer, I, I, I held onto it so hard and he didn't answer my prayer. And Jesus says everything is possible for one who believes and is our belief in him or in what he can do for us? Is our faith in, in Jesus or is our faith in what Jesus can do for us? It's a very subtle difference, friends. This church is about having our faith rooted in Jesus, not in if, if that's the case, what if things don't go well? Well, I'm going to praise him anyway. What if he doesn't answer any of my prayers? Well, I'm going to, I'm going to praise him anyway. That's a faith that, that stands, the test, is because it's not, 
it's not rooted in, in something else. It's rooted in Jesus. And so, so Jesus is everything that is possible for one who believes. And, and, and immediately the father says, he says, I believe, but help my unbelief. Ever felt like that, friend? Lord, I, I believe, but help my unbelief. Have you ever felt, I, I don't know where else to go. I don't know what else to do. I don't know what else I need to do. I don't know. I, I, I've at a loss for prayer. I don't even know what to pray, Lord. I, I believe, but help my unbelief. I, I've felt that. And I'm sure some of you have felt that. Maybe there's there's something in your life that you just, you know, here is here is this man that is that he's got... He's in the presence of Jesus, the author and perfecter of his faith. He sees him. He, 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 he wants more than anything for Jesus to heal his boy. And he says to him, Lord, uh, it, 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 please help me. Help my boy. Heal him. And Jesus says, everything is possible. And if for one who believes, and he says, I, I, I believe, but but help my unbelief. He, do, do you feel the anguish there? Do, do you feel just the... the Lord, I've got hope that you will, but but help me when I don't hope. Help me when I when 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 I can't see it. Help me. I have felt that more than more now than I ever have. It's like, Lord, I don't know how you're going to come through when we, when we got here. Lord, I don't know how you're going to come through. I don't know where we're going to find a place. I don't know where the people are going to come from. I don't know where all this is going to happen. But I believe that you're a good father. I believe that you want to bless me. I be, I believe that you'll, you you answer my prayers. But even when you don't, help my unbelief when you. When you don't answer my prayers. And when I read that story, I was like, isn't that, isn't that, like, do you feel that? Do you feel that? Lord, I, I believe that you can give me victory in that. I, whatever I'm facing, I, I believe that you can, you can overcome it. But sometimes I'm going to, my, my belief is going to be lacking. And, and I was thinking, I'm sure every single one of us have some level of, of authentic faith. But it goes up and down, doesn't it? We, we might have sometimes that we'll, we'll, we'll we will jump over a mountain because we've got so much faith. And then there's other times where we just don't. And, and, and that's okay because God isn't looking for, for absolute, like he's not looking for, for perfection when it comes to our faith. He's looking just for, for an obedience to come to him just with, with reverence and awe, but also just the humility and saying, Lord, I want to believe you more. Help me. Help me to believe you more. Joshua, you can, you can come up. There will be moments in this life where our faith will be assaulted by the enemy. There'll be moments where you feel all alone, where you feel like that batsman in cricket, where every single thing is after you. Everything they want you to fail, want you to get out. Every single thing out there will want. You'll feel alone and isolated. And the enemy wants nothing more than for us as, 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 as Christians to be isolated and alone. Because then he can... There'll be times where you're holding on to your faith by your fingernails and you're saying, Lord, I don't know what else to do. My, my faith isn't pure. It isn't perfect. Uh, my faith is weak, but help my unbelief. You might be assaulted by your doubts, but we go to the source of faith. We go to the word. We go to what Jesus is saying. We, we, go, to, we go to him and we say, Lord, here I am and I, I want to be used by you, but I, I don't know where you want me to go. I don't know what you want me to do, but, but help me. I, I have faith in you, but I don't know where that, what that looks like. And so I'm doubting. And, and far too often the enemy will, will, will try and cast doubt on, on the story that Jesus has for us. You might feel ill-equipped. You might feel isolated. You might feel alone. You might feel totally out of your depth. But you have victory. We were telling... Megan on, on Tuesday at Friendsgiving that one of those games is a five-day game. It's a five-day cricket game. It goes on from the morning to the evening for five days. They break for lunch and they break for tea because it's colonial, right? We have to drink tea. So true, true story. <laughs> they, have, they have a tea and we were telling Megan that uh, even after five days, it can be a draw. And Megan was like, what? So there's no winner? You've just played for five days and there's no winner? Like, I don't know what's that sport. And we were like, and it could be tense. Like sometimes a, a, a draw seems like a victory. Sometimes that guy's on the pitch there waiting for his team. He doesn't want to get out. He's been there for hours on end and, and, and they draw. It's like a victory because they've, they've knuckled down. They've, they've persevered. And Friends, we have the victory. You know you have the victory? Did you know that? You've got the victory. If you, if you believe in God and you trust him and you trust Jesus, you have the victory. 
your your cricket ball, your your faith in them might be so downtrodden, so so dirty and just not worth anything. But Jesus comes and you will replace it. He says, You've, I've given you the victory. I'll replace that ball. I'll give you a shiny faith again. All we have to do is go back to it. We need to go to the, the heart of it. We need to go to the source of it. And so this is what I want to do now. Josh is going to lead us in a song and we can, we can sit. It's a great song, The Heart of Worship by Matt Redman. It's, it's an old song. I love it. And, and I want us just to meditate on those words. You can sing along with them. You don't have to. You can just, you can raise your hands. You can pray, whatever it is. But I just want you to feel that the presence as, as Joshua is leading us, I want you to just feel that God is for you, that you have victory. So let's, let's meditate together. Answer the scripture from 1 Peter. It says, Praise be to God and Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. Isn't that amazing? You have an inheritance. You have an inheritance. And this inheritance is kept in heaven for you. It's an inheritance that you have. This faith that you have, this, this inheritance that you have as a son, as a daughter of the Most High, it's kept in heaven for you. So we will face trials, like it says in Scripture here. And these have come to prove the genuineness of our faith, which is worth greater than gold, which perishes, and, and result in praise and glory and honor in Jesus Christ's revealers. Friends, this... This faith that we have, it's, 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 it's going to have its highs and lows. But if we seek Him and we... Isn't it amazing? You have an inheritance in heaven that is stored there for you. It'll never perish. It'll never grow old. It's there for you. I hope you can see it. I hope you can see the inheritance the Father has prepared for you. Father, help us. Help us to... To trace after you and trust you with everything in all aspects of our heart is to trust you. Help us to include it. That you have an inheritance for us. This it would help us when we you no. when we feel our face is failing. Help us to come to you, God, Lord, I believe, but the help my unbelief that will be in those moments where no. I just feel overwhelmed with the pressure and the life of, of just whatever storms we are facing and help me to help us to focus on you. And so, so friend, as we continue this song, I just, I, I want us to just be, just spend a moment with our Father. I uh, have that looks in you. Uh, maybe there's things that you need to trust Him more, you need to have more faith in Him. Ask Him. Ask Him for that faith. And maybe there's a place in your life that you need victory. Maybe there's a, 
uh, a place in your life where you've just been you've got this label you've got this identity that you that you feel that is what you are known for that is who you are and, and, and God has said right now your identity is found in him not in anything else and so maybe there's something even that needs to break maybe there's a chain that needs to break in your lives because you you, you you just feel that you is that you find it comfort to be everything else other than that mm-hmm. So, friends, as we continue this song, just meditate on him. See what he said. I know that you can give me victory, you can give us victory in uh, the areas of our lives that we feel like we're drowning in our I can feel that this morning there's I, I can feel that there's areas of people life where we just feel like four hums and we don't know what to do we, we, we don't know where to turn and, and, and we thought Jesus would come through for us we, we could even answer our prayers and he hasn't yet and so we feel frustrated and our, and our faith is explaining and I can feel it this morning and so Father I, I just pray for, for everyone here that for those of us that are on a back end for those of us who just feel in the coast without we we uh, <laughs> peel the answers and not get an answer Father I just pray that we will seek you to seek the Timerson again 
we trust you and we hand these things over to you. We, oh, whatever, whatever battle we're facing and we think we're facing alone, help us to realize that you be with us always. You've always been with us. We never face anything alone. You're always with us. And so, so Father, I, I pray that this morning this has maybe been a time where we be reminded that whatever battle we face, whatever storm we are facing, we never do it alone. I pray for victory. I know that the victory is there. It is there. I know that ultimately you've, you've conquered death and sin, Jesus. I, I know that you've you, you conquered what I couldn't, what I, I couldn't do by myself. You've conquered that. You, you've conquered what you did so that I can live in the freedom that I have now. And, and I don't know, sometimes I've maybe taken that freedom for granted and, and maybe sometimes I've just... Uh, I, I just didn't know the full weight of what you've been through for me. And so I pray that this morning that we realize what you've done for us and realize what you've overcome for us. That anything that we are facing now, any any storm, any label, anything that I, I did that's not for me, anything, can you redeem for me? And so Father, help us to seek you this week. Help us to go after you this week. Help us to just yeah. know that we are loved unconditionally. That even when our faith is fading, you don't love us any less. You love us so much that Jesus, you came to die for us. And so, Father, I pray that this morning and this week we will have a fresh revelation of the love that you have for us, the extent that you went to find us. Thank you, Mitchell, all to you, Father. Yes. We give you all the glory and everything. So bless us, lead us, and guide us this week. We give you all the glory and honor. Thank you. Before our usher teams come forward to receive our tithes and offerings and response cards, here's a few important things happening with our CE family. God made you for a purpose and equipped you with a gift to use to influence the world for Him. Serving with CE allows you to make a big difference with purpose while building great relationships. Check the serving team bubble on the back of your response card to find out more about getting involved on a serving team. Here comes Christmas. Let's get ready for our big Christmas service on Sunday, December 24th at our regular worship times. And don't miss a single Sunday in December as we prepare for the Christmas season with our upcoming teaching series, Christmas Expectations. As our ushers come forward now to collect the response cards and receive our tithes and offering, our annual Christmas offering on Sunday, December 10th is an opportunity for us to collectively make a bigger kingdom investment that stretches into future generations. Each CE campus has a special project we're saving toward and 85% of the Christmas offering at each campus will go to that specific project. The other 15% of every gift to Next will go towards helping more people in need for our communities. Investing in the next generation throughout CE and planting new church experience locations. Would you prayerfully consider committing to an above and beyond recurring gift designated to Next? With your partnership, we can turn this vision into a God-pleasing and life-changing reality. Thank you so much for being on mission with us to help more people experience full life in Jesus Christ. Jesus. 
during the service and we'd love to have you reach out and tell us about it by scanning the QR code. If you have any questions, comments, or prayer requests, you can scan that same code or go to churchexperience.tv slash connect. We hope to hear from you. If you haven't, check out our CE social media, our Instagram, Facebook, website, or our app. Make sure you do or go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I've loved our time together and I can't wait to see you next week.